so in this question, we're essentially asked to put everything together from chapters 7 and 8 about Lewis structures. So that will include the first few questions of the chapter 7 homework and the um, previous question of this homework. So it's really important that if you haven't gotten that stuff down, you go back and review that because I'm going to go through this relatively quickly. I'm not going to go into all the details of how you calculate all of these things. Um, so it's going to be really important to go back and do that. All right, so let's take a look. So HCN. So the first thing we need to do is we need to draw the Lewis structure and identify all the atoms with non-zero formal charges. So the first thing we want to do is we want to count the valence electrons. So we have 1 plus 4 plus 5, which is a total of 10 electrons. Put the least electronegative atom in the middle, except for um, hydrogen. So we're going to have a carbon bond into a hydrogen and a nitrogen. Okay, this is hydrogen cyanide, a very poisonous gas, nasty stuff. All right, so now we've used two, four of our 10 electrons. Now I'm going to start filling the octets of the outside atom. So four, six, eight, ten. I've now filled the octet of the nitrogen. Now the problem with this Lewis structure is that carbon still doesn't have an octet. Of course, hydrogen doesn't want an octet, but carbon does. So how can I do that? Well, rule 3a is going to tell us to make multiple bonds. So if I make a double bond, that'll still put two, four, six electrons around nitrogen. So I have to make a triple bond in order to make this work. So if we do H, whoops, bonded to C, triple bonded to N, and now N just has the one lone pair. Now we can calculate the formal charges. So this is A. Um, the carbon is in 4A, so it wants four valence electrons. Count the dots is one, count the dashes is one. It has one, two, three, four electrons around it, so it's neutral. Nitrogen is in 5A, so it wants five electrons around it. One, two, three, four, five. So it's neutral. So both of these um, are neutral, and this is the best Lewis structure of HCN. All right, in previous videos, I would have spent five to 10 minutes going over how to do that, but here I'm going through it relatively quickly. All right, so B, we want to give the electron geometry and the molecular geometry of HCN. To do that, we want to use our um, cheat sheet here, okay, that we have that can tell us this. So we want to count domains with respect to carbon. And we have one hydrogen and one nitrogen. Remember, domains for the central atom. What counts as domains are atoms and lone pairs. So we have one, two atoms. So if we go to two domains, the electron geometry is linear. And you can't have two domains and a lone pair and still have a, three atoms in a row. So therefore, the molecular geometry is also linear. Or you could just say it has zero lone pairs, however you want to think about it. So both linear. C. C is to give the polarity of the atom. All right, so in this case, we have hydrogen on this side and nitrogen on this side. These are not the same. The domains are different, so therefore this is polar. And the nitrogen is going to be able to pull electron density um, out in this direction because it's more electronegative than the hydrogen and the carbon. Um, D, does the molecule have energetically equivalent resonance form? The answer here is no. So this is no resonance. Why not? We don't have a double bond. Um, I didn't do that right. Uh, we do not have a double bond. It could be in multiple locations. Triple bonds can't resonate, okay, because we can't have the bond go over here and have a double bond with hydrogen. Hydrogen can't um, do that. All right, so let's look at the next one. The hybridization of all unique atoms. All right, based on what you have drawn. So if we look here, hydrogen doesn't hybridize because it just has an S orbital. Well, let's look at carbon. Carbon has one, two domains. So two domains means that carbon is SP hybridized. And again, in the previous question, I go over that in much more detail. Nitrogen has one, two domains. So nitrogen is um, also SP hybridized. And it wants to know the total number of sigma and pi bonds for part F, all right? So if we look at this, we have a total of four bonds. One, two, three, four. One, two, this bond, and the first bond of the triple bond are sigma. The other two bonds of the triple bond are above and below the plane and inside and out of the paper, if you will. So there are two pi bonds as well for a total of two plus two, which is four bonds. 
All right, so now we're going to do the same thing for ClO2 minus. Again, in case you're just watching this part of the video, this is super abbreviated. You do need to look at Chapter 7 and um, Chapter 8, Lewis Structure Problems, in order to get uh, some more details here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to draw the, um, uh, the Lewis structure and put the formal charges, which is the first question of the Chapter 7 homework. So you got to have that down first. Again, this isn't meant to be, you know, a 45-minute video. So let's look at ClO2 minus. So we have 7 plus 2 times 6 plus 1 because it's minus charged. So we have a total of 12, 19, 20 electrons. I'm going to put the least electronegative atom in the middle. We do need to know that Cl is slightly less electronegative than oxygen. And we've now used two, four of our electrons. Now we want to start filling the octets of the outside atoms. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. I've now filled the octet of my outside atoms, or two eights is sixteen, if you like that better. I still have four electrons left. I've used sixteen out of my twenty. Where am I going to put them? Well, I'm going to put them on Cl. Why am I going to put them on Cl? Well, Cl does not have an octet. So now I've filled all the octets of my atoms. So now I need to minimize formal charges. Well, in order to minimize, make zero your formal charges, I need to first figure out my formal charges. So oxygens in 6A wants to have six electrons around it. How many does this oxygen have? Dots is one, dashes is one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This oxygen has an extra electron. Something with an extra electron has a minus charge. This oxygen is the same, one bond and three lone pairs. What about Cl? Cl has one seven and has one, two, three, four, five, six. It's missing an electron, so it is positively charged. Note that two minuses and a plus do add up to the overall minus. Note that uh, counting formal charges is another way of counting electrons, so that it should add up. All right, if they don't add up, chances are there's a mistake somewhere. All right, so let's look at this. Is there anything we could do to minimize formal charges? And the answer to that question is yes, there is something I could do to minimize formal charges. I could potentially make a double bond that will effectively take an electron away from oxygen and put an electron on chlorine. Said another way, it'll make this oxygen from negative to zero, and it'll make this chlorine from positive to zero. But there's an important question I need to ask myself before I make that double bond, and that is, can chlorine expand its octet? And we find that chlorine's here in period three. Elements that are period three or lower on the periodic table, said in another way, not in period one or two, are able to expand their octet. So chlorine can do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So what I end up with is O, like this, double bonded to Cl, which still has the two lone pairs, bonded to O, like this. And sometimes I get asked, can I use these, this lone pair or this lone pair? It makes no difference. And because of resonance, it really makes no difference. Okay, these would both be one and a half bonds if this turns out to be the best Lewis structure. Now, you can infer that I've taken an electron away from oxygen and give it to chlorine. Because in a bond, one electron belongs to oxygen formally, and one belongs to chlorine formally. That's what formal charge is. However, if you're not sure about that, just count it again. Oxygen wants six, has one, two, three, four, five, six. It's neutral. Chlorine wants seven, has one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, seven, it's neutral. This oxygen didn't change, so it's still minus. Or you could count it again, and it's seven, and it wants six, so it's negative. Now the question becomes, well, why not just make a double bond? For some reason, you know, we like symmetry. So if we look here, and we make another double bond, we end up with a Lewis structure that looks like this. Okay, I'm missing the lone pairs on the chlorine. So I'm effectively move that electron there. What that does is it effectively moves the minus charge over to the chlorine because I've taken an electron away from the oxygen and put it on the chlorine. Said another way, this oxygen now has six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and it's neutral. And this chlorine now has eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it's negative. So what we need to decide is, do we like this Lewis structure or do we like this Lewis structure? Both of them have less formal charges than this, so maybe they're theoretically better. But in this case, we want to have the negative formal charge on the more electronegative oxygen and not on the less electronegative chlorine. So the best Lewis structure is this one right here. 
All right, now we can look at B, the electron and the molecular geometry. So in this case with chlorine, we have one, two, three, four domains. So if we use our little cheat sheet, four domains is electron geometry of tetrahedral. The molecular geometry, because two of those four domains are lone pairs, is zero, one, two lone pairs, all right, or you could just go four and two lone pairs, which is bent. Um, C, give the polarity of the atom or ion. In this case, we have two lone pairs and two oxygens, so this would be polar. Not all domains are the same. Two domains are uh, lone pairs and two domains are oxygens. So it's polar in a similar way that water is polar. D, does this molecule have energetically equivalent resonance? In this case, we have resonance because this double bond could be on this side or this double bond could be on this side. So we could put has resonance. Uh, e, hybridization of all unique atoms. In this case, we have this oxygen and this oxygen are different, so I have to label them. I'm going to call it A and B. So I'm going to have OA, OB, and CL. You can label it any way you wanted, but that's how I'm going to choose to um, label this. So in this case, oxygen A has one, two, three domains. So it's going to be SP2. And again, I go over this in much more detail in the previous question, right at the beginning of it. Oxygen B, in this case, has one, two, three, four domains, so it's going to be SPPP or SP3, total of four orbitals. Chlorine has one, two, three, four domains, so it is also SP3. Letter F, the total number of sigma and pi bonds, and again, we're doing this one. This has a total of three bonds, one, two of them are sigma, and there is one pi bond. So that is basically uh, putting everything together from the previous two chapters, everything about Lewis structures, into one question. If you can do all of these things, including writing the Lewis structure yourself from scratch, you should be good to go.